Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, why do we use reference. This is a this is a question we've actually been asked a fair bit. Mm. And reference is for me one of the most important things you can have as an artist. It applies to all fields, whether you're doing logo design, stylized characters, super realistic VFX, or whatever it is. It's really like the number one tool you can use for for anything, really. It's it's like. You, as a human, are limited. You know, you're limited by your brain, and your brain can't do everything out of the box. No. So, assuming that, and a lot of people they think that they don't need to use reference to do something because there's no challenge in it or whatever. I don't know whatever ego thing it is that leads people to not using references. But the fact of the matter is, it's the only way for you to really improve. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you gotta practice and just sit down and grind if you're drawing sculpting painting whatever it is but references is, is like the surefire way to sort of expand your horizon that's how you progress how your brain starts to make new connections new imagery um, all that good stuff because whatever is in your brain is something that you already acquired from reference maybe it's not an active thing you know maybe you haven't gone out and looked at a tree but you've seen a ton of trees in your lifetime most likely Mm -hmm. Unless you live on like a soil field somewhere and there's no trees around. Um, so reference is, is key and it, it is something that whether you want to use it or not, you are using. Um, you might not just realize it. Yeah, reference here isn't, we don't we don't mean reference as go to Google Pictures and just look at that. Can be, yeah. that is one way of doing it. But it's just look at something. If it is go to the zoo and just observe something. We, we had a video before about this as well. Where we talk about reference. This video is going to be different. Uh, the other one was more, look at this rock. Yeah. Cool. We, we're, gonna we're definitely going to look at rocks Definitely well. going to do that. <laughs> but uh, this is more, um, some more theory behind it. One of the reasons why we have to use reference is because just from an evolutionary point of view, you have to process so much data in order to survive. If, you, if you're out in a savanna or you're out in, in, a, in a forest or whatnot, you have to identify, is this a rock or a tree or a saber-toothed tiger? Like instantly, there yeah. can't be any ambiguity. So in order for you to recognize a tree, you're seeing uh, uh, brown bark and you're seeing green leaves, probably that's a tree. Yeah. And then if you're a, a clever animal who wants to have camouflage, you make yourself brown with green leaves. Mm. And then you get something like a leaf-tailed gecko or something like that, which kind of breaks it. Yeah. And or they use your simple, you, they use your brain against you, <laughs> and then you have a rock. Rock is maybe a little bit shiny from water, and it's pretty hard, and there is no substrate for scattering. And then saber tooth tiger, pretty scary looking. Has a lot of subsurface gathering. Loves yeah. surface. You wouldn't uh, confuse that for a rock. No, exactly. Probably. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully. <laughs> but then you just have to like there can't be ambiguity because if you confuse a tree with a saber tooth, you that might be it. Like yeah. if you spend five seconds being like, mm, let's measure the distance of the skull to the thing, and you've got to be <laughs> able to is this um is this a friendly cat or is it a tiger? Mm. Like these kind of things, you have to get a danger level for it and you've got to just figure out what it is which is fantastic for survival and even even though you know most of us don't live on the the plains of africa anymore <laughs> uh some still do uh it's not it, it's not something that's been gone from civilization for for that long no. you know in in the grand scheme of evolution it's i don't know some hundred years where we haven't had to worry about uh, like hunting and stuff. Yeah, you know, and we still we still need it for cars. We still need that. It's still a useful skill. To yeah, have. yeah. A car could easily be confused with a saber tooth tiger. <laughs> if you, like if you don't like if you don't look, you know, that's actually something that like here in the UK, the cars that don't use like street like lights mm. and the lights aren't on. That's super creepy. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> so it's like even even for even for just general survival, not mm. just if you're hunter gatherers, it's still super handy. But it's terrible for art, yeah. Because now you're looking at uh, you're doing you're doing a human, and you just you're drawing what what your brain has internalized. It, what it, it the symbols your brain made is now what you're drawing. Yeah. If you're drawing a if you're drawing a car, well, a car is kind of boxy with headlights <laughs> and has a, some windows on it. That's what you're going to be doing. Yeah. But you aren't actually looking at it. So what you need to do is you have to break the patterns. This is. This is so important. And you can only do that through observation. And observation over, you know, many, many years. It's just, it's just, it's it's weird because observation is one of those skills that's so fundamental to anything you do 
as in any creative field. Um, it's not. I feel like it's not something that's talked about as much as it should be. Like a lot of focus is on if you like do painting or drawing or sculpting, and a lot of it is just oh, you know you just gotta paint a lot or you just mm. get it, get your pencil and you gotta get this pencil and just draw all the time. Yeah, but you also have to be smart about how you draw. You know what do you look at? Do you only do exercises from your brain, mm. um, which is also good. You know it's nice to challenge yourself to see what can you reproduce with whatever information you have yeah. in there. Um, but using references and observation is is an essential tool to getting better. Yeah, otherwise you're just replicating what you already know, yeah. like Martin was saying before, and that that doesn't lead to anything to anything new. And this is this is not just again for for realism. Mm. This is for everything. If you're watching all the Disney and Pixar movies, they're they're sourcing reference for everything. <laughs> they're they're going to the places when they're doing up. They're going to South. America to yeah. observe it because because you have to you have to get some level of believability into it. I mean, you have the examples of Snow White, I think it is from from Disney, where you like they have actual recordings mm. of the dances and stuff. You know, all the movement where they've just traced on top yeah. because they wanted that believability. I mean, that's obviously one thing is there's there's obviously a difference between reference and referencing and then interpreting like I'll do this versus, you know, if you trace over something. But even so, like if you look at the dance compared to what Disney managed to produce, it's still a stylized form of that, yeah. you know, but it's it's just heavily referenced from real life. And if you look at what Disney did just 10 years before, Snow White is from late 30s, mm. 10 years before you we were like Stim with Willie and they, they, they improved their quality like by... It's so much it's yeah. it, it doesn't even look like 10 years there was like um you know there was like that new league of legends uh, music video that came oh, out that's the best thing ever it's so it's like it's i don't know it's been out for a few days it's got like 50 million views or something uh, well deserved half as me <laughs> <laughs> well deserved it's like it's a super catchy song mm. like they really they really nailed that the art style is awesome um but my point with that is if you look at the animation most of that is motion capture. Mm. You know, it's not obviously okay. I'm gonna assume it's motion capture. Yeah. Like, if there's anyone, if there's an animator out there who actually worked on it, like, no, we didn't use motion capture. Like, okay, good on you. But mm. it most likely looks like motion capture, yeah. right? Because you get that subtlety um, in the movement that it's really hard to replicate, and it just it takes it would take a lot longer to replicate that yeah. by just doing keyframe animation versus starting from a pretty solid motion capture. And that as well is also the choreography for that is also based on real world reference. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. all that, which I might want to watch a few times as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have actual dancers. Yeah. So Yeah, you would never do that without that. But that's that's what I feel a lot of people do when they're doing CG. They they forget that the real world exists. Yeah. There's something we talk about in some of our other videos as well. Like if you if you're gonna do a uh, a sexy dance thing and uh, you're an animation student you might just start blocking some stuff out here but what a more experienced person would do like you know the guys at riot they're they're hiring dancers to yeah. do a choreography you're you you use cg as as a tool but you source everything from real traditional life yeah and e even if it like even if it isn't motion captured you'll see whenever you see a breakdown from any animated film nowadays, there's an animator that puts out a breakdown, you will always see the recording of them acting out the scene first. Yes. Then then they will, you know, interpret that scene, reference that scene, and then they'll recreate it in 3D afterwards. So it's... It, it's so rare to find people that just don't look at things when they produce something. That, But that doesn't mean that they haven't. No. You know, they, they've looked at stuff for years. Yeah. Like, you see something like, we, we're going to pull up some examples of portrait drawing stuff in a little bit. And being able to do a good portrait drawing is you observing faces for, like, a fucking long time. Mm. And then you recreate it and you do that again and again and again. Um, that's just that's just fact. It's pretty interesting reference as well. Uh, we want to we'll talk about something here where we, we, we recently went to Hong Kong mm. and uh, we saw a sculpture. And we're like, that's a pretty cool sculpture. And then we looked at it a bit more and we're like, wait a minute, <laughs> something is fundamentally wrong here. Well, what is it? And it was, uh, it was a picture, it was a, it was a sculpture of, uh, of a giraffe with zebra stripes on it. And we were like, my God. So have you been watching this video so far for like 10 minutes or so? And you're like, there's something off about that giraffe. <laughs> yeah, it's a zebra <laughs> with zebra stripes. Yeah, zebra stripes on a giraffe. And it's weird, like, 
I'm I'm sure like we're gonna lot getting a, gonna get a lot of comments now. Be like, oh, you guys are so stupid. You can't t- yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. But we're like we're walking through a mall, right? The point is we weren't staring at a screen for ten minutes. No. We were walking through a mall, and you know we caught this glimpse of a giraffe, like a life size giraffe sculpt mm. with zebra stripes, and we were like, oh, that's pretty cool, life size, whatever. Wait, what? <laughs> you know, it wasn't immediate. No. Because the symbol in our head isn't isn't like okay, we need to identify the spots on the on the giraffe to know it's the giraffe. No, no. Yeah. The symbol in our head is, okay, giraffe, long legs, long neck. Mm. We know, and it's like generally this shape. Weird horse thing. Weird horse thing. Like nothing in our brains went, mm, giraffes aren't fundamentally supposed to have zebra stripes, I guess, or whatever. Mm. It Like you had to think about it. So it wasn't one of those instinctive things. Obviously, if you looked at one or two giraffes and you were drawing a giraffe, you would never do one with zebra stripes. But, you know, let's just to emphasize that point. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, we've been looking at a lot of references throughout our career. We've been looking at a fair bit of giraffes as well, and they're crazy. But we even we were just like, we have, this is weird. This is weird to look <laughs> it at. It took a while to register yeah. what was wrong, Yeah, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Maybe that just says something about us. As yeah, artists. maybe maybe you're all better than us. There is a <laughs> real possibility that every single person who looked at that was like, "Yeah, that's a giraffe." Yeah, we, get like, we get like we get hundred percent of the comments like, "Yeah, we, I, I didn't see that." No, yeah, no, you guys, are, you guys are terrible. I really, I really hope everyone is like, "Man, I didn't, I had no idea." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next reference we want to look at is, I think, um, you know, we talked about this a little bit before, and we've done this in our one of the BFX BFX talks we did. Mm. And this is an example of how to trick your brain when you do when you're using reference. So you look at this uh, phallic animal head, <laughs> aka a tortoise, and where do you start? Yeah. You know, where do you, if you were to reproduce this, if, if it was a drawing, a sculpture, a painting, whatever it is, where do you start? There's so much detail, and there's so much variation in detail, whether it's uh, small pores or the little scale things around the eyes you know there's just so much information in there that it's really hard to distill down to what does it look like fundamentally what what is the shape of this so we took this image and first of all grayscaled it and then made it then blurred it Mm. to sort of like just get rid of all the noise and you can see that as soon as you do that it's a lot of the detail that's not needed to represent what this is just sort of like goes away first off all the color is needed to represent the shape no no that is something i see a lot when people are painting and drawing or sculpting or whatever there is just so much here the first thing you got to do is first you got to get the shape right you got to get a construction right of it if you start to go and be like oh there is some green tints here like you're missing the point yeah. you got to go from general to specific so if you're sculpting this specifically then you you should just first blur it even more than this <laughs> and then yeah. just get the main shapes right like first just get the overall silhouette right and then work your way down. Blur it less and less. One thing that's super nice about this blur technique is that I mean, you can even like just if you don't blur the pictures, you know, squint your eyes like really because then you sort of limit how much yeah. light comes in, and you can like you can distill it even further. But you you look at something like this, I, like I love this area, like it's so full of nice detail. But you don't need that to represent the shape in the beginning. This no. is something that could come later. But by blurring it and making it black and white, we just get this indication of a shape. Yeah. We go like, oh, okay, we can distill that down to this now instead of this, where it's like blah, 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 blah. The yeah. same thing with this uh, ball sack thing it's got <laughs> hanging here. You know, instead of seeing all the little dots and everything that makes up the little wrinkles, we just see bigger forms, like yeah. bigger forms that are easier to interpret. It's easier for our brain. Our brain doesn't have to work that much anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm even doing this myself when I'm sculpting. I've been mm. sculpting these phallic creatures for, for a long time. <laughs> for many years. <laughs> for many years. <laughs> An expert in, in this. In phallic animals. <laughs> a lot of them are. Yeah, they yeah. they really are. Particularly, but this is also, like, just unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very unfortunate tortoise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But it's so easy to just get into details too early on it. But if you're if you're sculpting from this, well, you can't get into de- details because you can't see it. Yeah. And um, if you're looking at the original one, it's it's so easy because it's all there. Yeah. Uh, th- there is just so much information. Yeah, it's it. a great reference. You know, it has everything you need to know about sculpting a turtle. Yeah. yeah. Except for how to sculpt it, actually. Yeah. Or, yeah. Apart from um, that. But the the cool thing about our brain is that it you know we've talked about this before. 
in terms of Henning and and myself, like our language learning, mm. you know, doing Chinese and Japanese. And so many of those things we've sort of by accident, whenever we do these videos, discovered that so many of them are related. Whether you're doing language learning or you're doing something creative or um, like maybe painting a drawing or maybe you're learning programming or whatever it is. So there's so many things that share uh, a similar, what do you call it? Like it's a similar structure for how to learn. Yeah. And one thing I remember we talked about with uh, Matt from Matt versus Japan about is like that whole dictionary entry thing. And so whenever, if this, let's pretend this is the first time you ever see this turtle. Tortoise, tortoise, whatever. What was the difference? A uh, turtle lives in uh, a tortoise is on land. A tur- turtle is in the ocean. Ah, okay. Observation. Mm, there are more, you know. <laughs> so let's pretend this is the first time you see this tortoise or any tortoise, mm. right? Any kind of this animal. Okay. So there's one entry now in your little dictionary in yeah. your brain. This is the first time you see it. You go, you go away, and then someone tells you like a month later to reproduce it. You'll you'll be clueless. You'll yeah. be like, oh, I was probably like penis shaped. Yeah, kind that's, of kind of phallic. That's that's about what you remember. You observe it again. Maybe it's a different tortoise, but it's kind of similar. And the more you start to observe it, the more you start to notice. Then you're like, oh, okay, there's like these little bumps around the eyes. Mm. Oh, okay, there's a little scratch there. Maybe it does something. I don't know. Okay, there's a lot of wrinkles here. Ah, oh, there's a wrinkles that goes across this way. Ah, oh, you see like some compression because it's chewing and stuff. So you, all these things that start to pop out to you the more and more you start to look at it. We were talking about this before recording now, how like how there's so much variation between people. Like you could sculpt, you can sculpt humans for a lifetime and you would just learn different things between, because there's so much variation between the different people. Yeah. But you could also sculpt the same person for your entire lifetime <laughs> and you would see new things every single time. You would yeah. get, if you were to sculpt the same person, like the first time you're doing it, you would just do some general human kind of maybe some likeness. But the hundredth time, you would get all the little subtleties right. You, you, then, then getting the proportion is easy. Then you've done that for a long time. But then afterwards, you can focus on little, on small little plane changes. Plane changes become smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller in your brain to the point where you get obsessed with like the caruncula of the eye <laughs> and like these small little details, which yeah. are so important. I remember years ago, when was this? Maybe six or seven years ago. I, I wanted to do a sculpture of um, a character from Mass Effect. Oh, I can't remember his name. It's the assassin dude who's like, uh, it's like got these. Oh, from big... Mass Effect Two. Yeah, 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 with the black eyes, and he's got like that disease. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he dies, and uh, I, I, rem- I like, because I, I've been thinking back to that when I was sort of like analyzing footage from Blur, and because they made an awesome model of that for like uh, for an, for a cinematic. And looking at the game model, looking at the uh, 2D concept art that, that came out. And the way I was trying to replicate it was from the from the details and then out. Mm. You know, so I, I would, it was like, it was the classic sort of like, okay, I, I don't know what I'm doing. This is all that I notice. And and a lot of the stuff that you notice when, when you're starting out is all these fine little wrinkles. Like that, that, that's that's what's easy to perceive because there's a lot of contrast in there. What you fail to perceive most of the time are the big shapes, you know, those kinds of shapes. And I had the same issue looking at this eye. It's kind of like very reminiscent of uh, of the assassin dude mm-hmm. there. And I would start like basically my sculpt would start out with trying to like sculpt in Damien Standard all this stuff before anything was really uh, anything was really there. That's just because I hadn't observed enough. When I was starting out with sculpting as well, I had the same thing where I would uh, watch tutorials and uh, we, we basically exactly what we're doing now in our tutorials where I'd be like, damn, just stop worrying about the silhouette. Just get to the damn details <laughs> right away. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, who the, cares about the, de- the silhouette? Because the silhouette is so boring to get right. What you, because it doesn't really add like the, it doesn't really add a realistic silhouette. It doesn't really add like this tiny speck or it doesn't add a realism to it, but it's the foundation for everything. Yeah. So we do that in our tutorials now. We're like, yeah, we're going to spend 90% of our time on the silhouette and then we might sculpt some details here and there. So I'm sure a lot of people are looking at the same thing and having the same reaction I had. Yeah. Because yeah. I was really pissed off at those tutorials. But that's because I didn't understand that you can't start with the, the details. No. You have to start with the big picture. So if you if you don't know how to simplify this in your brain, I mean, we're at a level now where we can do that mm-hmm. to a reasonable degree. But if you can't, just, just blur it. You see someone like uh, like Simon Lee, sculpture. Mm, he's um, so good. 
spider zero or whatever zero. on instagram i think check him out and like his like he doesn't do details like no. in his sculptures like his diorama like super cool uh, he basically sculpts a story yeah um, a lot of the time and his understanding of form and silhouette is fantastic yeah. so he doesn't he doesn't need all the detail and and the sculptures are maybe like I don't know like one eighth size or something. Yeah, they're tiny. And but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that there is no like these are real clay sculptures. It doesn't matter that there are no pores or no. sometimes it's just indication of facial details. You know that's it. Yeah. And and the fingers are just like a little sausage that's just attached. Maybe you and with an indication of a joint, but that's it. Uh, because the silhouette and the pose is so is so strong. You don't need all of that detail. You don't need the fingernails. No. The, little cuticles and shit like it's not needed well let's say that was he would he done it in seabrush then you, after after he gets a silhouette right then he could have yeah, always yeah, gone yeah. in there 100%. but uh, the problem is that people don't do that they don't start with a really strong silhouette and motion all that they're starting mm. with just the wrinkles they're starting with the cuticles off the fingers yeah so next up uh not to shit on anyone but uh here's a face drawing so we were talking we were wanting to talk about um, sort of beginning stages of portraiture mm. or drawing a face or you're sculpting a face or something. So we found something that's like um, reminiscent of someone who's been drawing for a little bit and, and is trying to get a good grasp on how to draw faces. And this is typically what you see. So, you know, this is someone who's on their way to, to probably becoming a good uh, craftsman. Yeah. But there are some fundamental issues with the drawing. You know, one glaring one is the anime eyes. Mm. So it's 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 and this becomes uh, this happens because of a, a lack of observation. You might have been using reference for something like this, but your eyes and your brain aren't trained enough to v- sort of like see it in relation. You like oftentimes when people start drawing and when they start drawing faces, what a lot of people will do is draw eyes. Because eyes is, I don't know, I don't know what the obsession is with eyes. Like, I guess eyes are nice. Yeah. But, it, like, drawing eyes is, like, you go, to, you go to Instagram and you just search for, like, eye drawing or something. There's, like, millions of posts of just eye drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can also see that that's where a lot of the love is. Like, here's, like, really, like, tight lines and, like, okay, little lashes there. And then the rest of it is just kind of rough. Like, but the proportions are off. You know, the proportions between things are off. The general sort of like you have all that uh, uh, Loomis theory with where to position the eyes compared to the ears and the mouth and the nose. And that's all like kind of there. Yeah. But you're just you're missing the next step. Yeah. The, when I'm looking at this and whenever I'm giving feedback to people like this. It's always hard because it's not just like, oh, use if, if it was a CG, like you couldn't just be like, oh, use a different hotkey or just a different <laughs> tool. Like the feedback to this guy is not get a better pencil. It doesn't yeah. matter if this is painted with like French fries or, you know, it really doesn't matter. The point here is that the artist who did this probably literally can't perceive a real face. That's such a, it's such a hard thing in the beginning that the issue yeah. isn't so much can you draw the specific thing out of context? Like if you if you had to have a grid or something, you could draw that. He could totally follow the lines. His pencil technique itself isn't necessarily the issue. Yeah, it's a bit rough here. But the main issue is that the artist actually can't perceive it. Yeah. He's too used to the symbols to avoid the saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> and, and and oftentimes what you see specifically with, with drawing, well, I guess maybe with sculpting as well, when people are starting out, is that people tend to look at objects in lines and mm. not form like this and this is that's one of the issues here as well i mean you could go in and add form by rendering but it would still the underlying drawing would still not 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 work right but everything here is based on lines mm. you know it's sharp lines if take to the go to the next example here obviously someone who's uh, pro as fuck uh, at drawing portraits it's amazing right but what you see here is there's a lack of lines. You don't see the lines because there's no lines in a face. Yeah. You know, there's th- maybe some wrinkles when you get older uh, here. Maybe here you'll have some deep, deep lines. But very, very different from this, which is a, this is a line drawing. And this is a form drawing. Yeah, even if you do have wrinkles or whatnot. Like obviously for the mouth and stuff, there is still a line here. But it's not a line. It's, it's just volume. Yeah, but like, look at the... It's three-dimensional. Look at the subtlety. Like, a little yeah. dimple there. It's just like a little bit of a shading difference yeah. compared to, to this. Another, But another one is just in terms of pure observation. When you observe a face 
especially in the beginning, you tend to look at it like this. Mm. This is a mock shot, like straight up and down. This is how you draw a face. But there isn't a lot of personality in this. Mm. Where you have this, yeah, this is also straight on, but it's just tilted a little bit and a little bit to the side. It's a lot more subtle. And of course, you know, the, the rendering here is there is actual rendering, so that yeah. makes a huge difference as well. But this is just pure observation and a lot of practice. Yeah, it's like, obviously there is some difference in, in, in the rendering technique. Yeah, like yeah. there is no doubt about that or years of difference in that. But even if even if the the first drawing, the first artist we looked at could render as nice as this, it would still be a fundamentally wrong drawing. Yeah. Like it would still it would still look like a mugshot, which, which uh, lacks basic proportion. You sometimes see that where you have really good artists who render kids' drawings and they look awesome. Yeah, they're super cool. <laughs> they're, they're super cool, but they're still, you know, they're not good. Draw, drawings. Oh well, they might be. That's how you define art. <laughs> yeah. But they're still, they're they're still not fixing the issue. No, uh, they're they're just putting a nice coat of paint on top of, of of like a really broken home. Yeah. So there there's no like this this isn't a, a like okay here's how to improve your portrait drawings because when you're at this stage like Kenny said this is this is a very tricky stage to feedback because yeah. at this stage you're not fluent enough in observation yet. No. Like you're not, you, because if you were, you wouldn't make the mistakes of making the eyes like huge like this or defining the lips as these, like a sticker that's just no. put on there. That's, that's not how you would observe it. Like this, this is the perception of, of a beard from this artist, which is just like, duk, duk, duk. Yeah. Um, which, you know, can be a stylized observation, but you know, I, I would assume this is not. So getting from this stage to this stage is years of practice. But a lot of observation and using a lot of reference. Yeah. Um, always using reference. Always for everything. And with reference comes weird shit sometimes. Yeah. So this is a we just googled a random yew tree mm. and we're just talking about like the like yew trees are so weird. They they don't make sense when you think of a traditional tree. You have a tree over here that kind of looks like a tree tree. Yeah. Or back here, <laughs> there's like oh yeah, I guess this could look like a tree. It's straight up and down. But this, I mean, it's just like a jumbled mess of branches and just, just grown into like this tumor shape right and if someone were to present like if you'd never seen a yew tree before and someone did it in 3d or someone did a drawing of it like here's a tree and you're like that that's not a tree that, <laughs> that's, that's a mutant that's a, that's a mutant tree <laughs> and be like no that's a yew tree and yeah. you know oh, okay because you have never observed a yew tree before yeah. um we had that when we were in hong kong with actually it kind of looks like no, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I'll, I'll let people figure this one out themselves. Anyway, um, uh, the banyan tree? Yeah, Chinese banyan. Yeah, so we, 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 we noticed these trees when we were in Hong Kong. And it's these absurd trees that have these vines that sort of grow down from yeah. the tree. And then as they grow older, the vines sort of do this. They become the tree. They become solid. It looks like uh, it looks like somebody had put down support for it. Yeah. We were wondering if somebody had actually, <laughs> like, if the municipality there or whatever it is had had put down actual supports for the tree. Yeah. But uh, this is something the tree did itself. It's and smart. and if I saw the CG, I'd be like, dude. Like, <laughs> you gotta. Trees don't work like that. They don't <laughs> add structural support to themselves. <laughs> But turns out they do. Yeah, I mean, this, this blew my mind because once we started looking at it, we took some pictures. We realized that it was like, as you can see, it's actually joined. Like yeah. it's, and this is a branch, just like this is a branch. Yeah. And you see all the times, it's kind of like, um, kind of like veins mm. on a, like an ecrochet sculpt or something that runs along. And some of these will start to grow down, like here, grow down, and then eventually it'll hit, it'll hit the soil, start, and then it just you know keeps growing, gets bigger and bigger. And because it's already a part of the tree, you can see it originates up here. Then it just sort of like, it's already fused together and just becomes another branch in the tree. So the reason we're showing this is not because we want to just geek out over the cool trees we saw. <laughs> although that was pretty cool as well. But it's more because if you I see this so often, you have people doing environments and they just Google tree. Or they just, yeah, they don't yeah, even yeah. Google. They just do some Caesar stuff and they're just blocking out a tree. And uh, it looks okay. Maybe it, maybe it works. And then they go to cdtextures.com and they go in Bark <laughs> and uh, they apply a tile bowl onto the tree and they're super happy with the work. And you can probably get up to like 50, 60% that mm. way. But if you if you got to take it to 100%, you need to observe real world reference. Yeah, There is just no other way to do that. 
like just just the frequency of details here. It is the same as figure sculpting. It's high, mid, and low. Yeah. You have everything. You have nice, nice tertiary details. You have mid frequency. You have everything. Yeah. Like look at. I mean, there's some like you've got the nice silhouette, big branches, and you've got all this little stuff in between. Yeah. And little tiny growths that just go up and down. It's such a fascinating tree. Structural support by nature. <laughs> <laughs> How nature? How nature? Then we saw this. Now this is a mind fuck. Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll let you look at it for a little bit and uh, pause the video and tell me what you see. <laughs> because uh, what this is, I, like, I don't know how this works. Like, someone tell me how this works. I don't want to Google it because I almost <laughs> don't want to ruin the mystery. But uh, this was in the... Oh, what was the garden called in Hong Kong? There was like a temple. Yeah, it's a car. It, was a, it was a temple with a garden. Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was a temple with a garden. A beautiful place in Hong Kong. I yeah. can't remember the name. Uh, this part up here is uh, wood. We knocked on it. It's it's wood. This part down here is rock. Like, it is legit stone. And it's fused together. And this isn't some tree that's grown around a rock. Like, you can see the bark here, how it transitions into stone. Like yeah, I, We have no idea. I, like, I legit have no idea. I just, we just wanted to share this with you. Because, because I just thought it was super cool. Like, look, this is down... And you can see here, you can see traces of bark... But yeah. this is solidified. Like, this is petrified, I guess it's called. This is rock. Um, I touched it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make sure. No this, touching, but more touching. This down here it. is also rock. And then, you know, it turns to, to stone. And then you have parts of it that is stone. I don't know how you, how you like, petrify uh, a tree, but not petrify all of it. Like, I could... In, like if it's in the ground for I like have no idea but anyway in terms of observation this is a really cool thing right because if you like if you didn't use reference like i swear if i if i hadn't seen this one thing is a yew tree that kind of looks like a mutant tree but this mm. just doesn't make logical sense no. you're like yeah i made a tree that's also a rock like, <laughs> yeah okay, you need to reassess reality I yeah think. it doesn't work like that this is crazy like how you can have something in nature that is clear, like does this float? Yeah. I don't know. Like, because uh, like most trees float, but most rocks don't. <laughs> you know, it's just like I have so many questions. Morton has questions, damn it. <laughs> um, but just from a pure observation point of view, there's so much going on in here. Yeah. And there's so much delicious detail. And this is something you can use for, for so many different things. There isn't really a frequency here. Like, it's very hard to see how big this here is. Yeah. If this here, if this here would be like a huge Chinese mountain or if this is like a tiny rock, it's very hard to actually see. So let's say you were doing some kind of like crystal cave. You could totally use this here as reference. Mm -hmm. Or if you're doing like a undersea cave or whatever it is... Uh, it, you you can get reference from very interesting places sometimes. Yeah. So I would I would I would sometimes do this. Go to these weird places. Look at this weird stuff. Just to get truly unexpected things. Because if you go to Google and you Google rock, you get something boring. But this is not boring. This is very yeah. Different. And like like so if I'd never experienced this myself, I, I've seen a picture of it. I would probably have experienced it. But <laughs> like if I was never made aware that this could exist in nature. Like, the next time I would want to make, like, a cool fantasy environment or something that's, like, a little special. Like, Henning says, a crystal cave and there's some organic stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's make a wood thing that's also rock. Mm. You know, you don't think about That's another entry in my brain that yeah. now allows for that to happen. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty cool, Leave too. your comments down below. <laughs> Whatever you want to comment on this because this is fantastic. Yeah. I'm sure there's some basic scientific explanation. Yeah, it's just petrified and it's been there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, oh, oh, cool. <laughs> that was like, we were like, how do whales drink? Yeah, we have some stupid questions. Or was it like, how do how do whales eat but not drink? Yeah. I, but I, yeah, we had, we had two questions. How do whales drink because they're in the water and there is salt water? But also, how do they eat? Because they're mammals, so they don't breathe on the water. Yeah, and how do they eat without, <laughs> without get, drinking? Without drinking at the same time, <laughs> and we don't want to know. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So we're not going to read the comments for this video. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another crazy tree from the same garden. Um, this is, I mean, this is one of those. Of the next picture as well is going to kind of show this kind of this substance fractal. Yeah. Like if someone showed me this as a substance thing, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, it just doesn't look like a tree at all. You abuse the oil texture <laughs> and um, now the oil procedural, and then you just add some random cloud color to it, <laughs> yeah. and then you color it there. You need to do better than that. But, but this, this is crazy. It's crazy what nature can produce. Like th again, this is a very atypical tree. You yeah. wouldn't 
well, at least I wouldn't think to do a tree like this. Like no. you, you usually when you think of a tree, right? You think uh, this yeah. bark that goes straight up and down. Yeah. This goes horizontal. This and then is a little so bit swirly. of swirly and like it actually kind of it actually kind of twists around the tree. Yeah. So it's just it's a very interesting tree to me. Yeah. I love looking at trees. Yeah. And then another one Rocks. Rocks. Uh, so this, I guess the other one was kind of like a pseudo rock. Uh, this is the first real rock. R- walk. The first real rock. That's really hard to say. Mm. Um, and th- these rocks kind of blew our minds a little bit because it kind of looked like someone put a bad shader in 3D on them because they're yeah. so shiny and also because the structure is so weird. You know, what? It's when you think of a traditional rock, you don't think of something that has been eroded away within the rock itself. No, it's always like, well, I guess, you know, people have this, yeah, this is a rock, mm. you know, it kind of looks rock like. This doesn't look rock like, this looks almost like a fluid that's then solidified or it's something. It's so absurd. We we saw some in there was like a, was called a rock garden as well, which mm. was inside, and they had some rocks there which they legit didn't look real, like if. They were missing a they were missing a mid frequency and high frequency pass. It looks like <laughs> if you took uh, a super nice rock in in ZBrush, you hit zero measure, and now you applied like a like a cloud texture on it, and you and they <laughs> call it a day. Yeah, but it was real rock made. That's why you know if if, if I were to do that in three D, I would still not do that. Yeah, because I, 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 this still doesn't look real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, but it just shows how reality can sometimes not look real. It's like when you observe clouds sometimes. Mm. I've had that before where I just go, man, nature is a shitty at rendering today. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you look at the sky and it looks like a sky dome from, you know, any game. Maybe from... it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You just look up and there's no volume to the clouds. Yeah. They they legitimately just look like they're just plastered on top of a, of a sky dome. Like Toy Story clouds. From, yeah, basically. From, from the room there. Oh, no. Is this like some flat earth theory stuff? Oh, or there something? might be. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Um, that, that just happens sometimes. And then other times you have clouds that are just volumetric and just span several kilometers up yeah. in the sky. And you're like, wow, that looks really 3D. But that's all the stuff you would get through observation. Obviously, if you were to make the clouds that look shitty in real life, they're also going to look shitty in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> so don't do that. You got to be careful what you source from as well. Like I said, like the rocks we saw in the rock garden, I wouldn't actually no, use them no. for anything because they're just because they exist. Don't mean that they'll they're, <laughs> they look good. No, not at all. <laughs> so I think that's one of the key things about observation as well. Like you have to be able to filter, yeah. um, and that's also tricky because like in the beginning, it's it's really hard to figure out what is good reference and what is bad reference. Um, Usually what bad reference is, is something that's already been interpreted by other people. Mm. It can be good and bad, but like, especially in the beginning, because then you have a hard time figuring out, okay, what have they stylized and distilled and what is like more close to real life. Um, If you just observing from real life, then at least you'll have the ability to decide, okay, what do I want to stylize and what do I want to simplify? If you're not going for like 100% realism, that is, for example. So some examples of that is uh, examples of bad reference. Well, not bad, but not ideal is... uh it's a Renaissance sculpture because mm. that's heavily interpreted by an other artist. Yeah. Another example of a good a good reference there is a 3D scan because mm-hmm. that's just objective reality for it because there is just no way you can replicate reality in stone. Mm. No, you can't get the subtlety you can from from the real world. So, so you know, with the and but of course, like the Renaissance sculptures are amazing and beautiful. So They're like uh, none of us alive could do anything like that <laughs> no. now uh, in marble. But the problem with having already pre-interpreted reference whether it's drawing painting sculpting sculptures whatever is that someone has already distilled information yeah. and removed a lot of the noise um, maybe you wanted some of that noise maybe yeah. you wanted you know you see that a lot with like apps and stuff for the renaissance kind of sculptures maybe like the roman sculptures as well greek stuff is that it's very stylized very, very sometimes stylized. it doesn't even look it doesn't even look real, but no. you you still understand that it's based on real life because you can see where it comes from. But that doesn't mean that it's a, a stylization that you necessarily want. No. Now, master studies are still super useful. Mm-hmm. They absolutely are. But um, but just use different sources of that. Yeah. A specific example where I would I would use for, like, let's say we have a character, let's say you have like a orc character, Lord of Rings style, one of the little guys there. They have, they have armor on and they have 
they have the orcs, the orc faces there. I would use reference for a lot, a lot of different ways. There. I would use for all the armor, get real world equivalent of it. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like, even if it's exaggerated, you know, you can still find real world reference for all that. Yeah. For every single piece, find that. For like the character, you would find like maybe a, it's like a, a bat nose for the, for him, bat ears for the ears, uh, maybe dog no dog eyes for the eyes and. Just you would just source every single piece from somewhere. It doesn't mean you have to adhere one hundred percent to it. It just means you use it as a starting point, just to get the level the level of believability into it. Yeah. So I think um, that about covers it again for another round of observation. <laughs> um, we have yeah. two other videos on observation X as well. Mm. Um, we have the first, which is specifically on observation and. Uh, rocks mm. <laughs> mostly uh, we have a bfx talk uh where we also talk about observation and now this one it is an important subject that i think tends to get overlooked which is why we want to cover it but we'll try to cover it from different angles every yeah. time um to give you something new to to work with so um yeah do you have anything else you want yeah to i'm add? curious to hear about what you guys have thought about the giraffe zebra yeah or the rock tree yeah, or the rock tree. Please uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> give and, us your thoughts. And don't tell us about how whales, they they, they do stuff. Clearly whales don't drink no, or eat. Whales don't drink and they don't eat. Yeah. So we don't want to know. It's just fact. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.